Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today for part number 14 of the series Love's the Message, where we're talking about love, because love is supreme, God is love. But what is love? Love is action. And we talk about what the Bible has to say about that during this series. And your scripture verse today is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, which says, Love always hopes. So if you email us that scripture verse, along with the keyword that I'm going to give you here shortly in the teaching, then we will send you one of our weekly prize packs in the mail. And who doesn't like getting some fun stuff in the mail? Bible bucks, candy, little prizes, and things like that. So here we go. Love always hopes. Now that word hopes means to expect or anticipate. Uh, It was funny, back when I was a kid, back way in the 70s, there was this ketchup commercial on, and the tagline in the commercial was anticipation, because the folks that were uh, using this brand of ketchup, they would turn the bottle upside down for the ketchup to come out, but it would take a long, long time. They knew it was going to taste good once it finally got on their french fries or their hamburger or whatever, but they would sit there and wait and wait and wait, and so they anticipated, they expected for that point in time when the ketchup would actually come out of their bottle, go on their food, and then they could eat it, and it would taste great. And that's a little bit of the way that biblical hope is. Hope expects or anticipates. Well, it expects or anticipates what? Well, number one, it hopes for or anticipates the goodness that God has for us directly in our lives. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 talks about the great and exceeding promises that God has given us. And God has promised us as Christians, if we love and trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, He's promised us a lot of things. For instance, He's promised us a home in heaven when our life on this earth is done. One day when our life on this earth is done, uh, we're in heaven with Him, we'll also have perfect health. Uh, He's promised us satisfying jobs and relationships in our lives. Now, the promises that God has for us, they can take time, sometimes even years to pass. And that's a little bit difficult because we're so used to everything happening so quickly in our lives. We've got fast internet, people drive fast cars, you know, we seem to be able to get information just at the snap of a finger. And so we're not used to things taking time. But if you look at people in the Bible that were strong people of faith, oftentimes the promises that God had made them in their lives took even years to pass, to come to pass at times. But that's why love always hopes because hope in the Bible isn't sort of some wishy-washy, oh, I wish and maybe. It's a confident expectation that God will bring the good things that he has promised us in our lives and in our future. He will bring those things to pass. So one, love always hopes in the good promises that God has given us directly, things that come straight from his hand into our lives. But then we also hope in the good that God has for us indirectly through other people in our lives. God has blessed us with parents and friends, uh, husbands and wives in situations, or good leaders. And these are blessings, and they are things uh, and people that God uses to bring forth good and good promises that he has for us in our lives. You know, God has promised to, to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. And one of the way he does that is through parents. Our parents give us a, a roof over our head and food and clothes, and they give us a sense of love and caring. God will supply us with friends. Uh, friends are great a great way to share common struggles and interests with, so you can help one another and encourage one another. And Maybe one day you'll get married. You'll have a husband or a wife. You'll be working together as a couple for the common purpose of building up God's kingdom. And by the way, that is your keyword, kingdom. Uh, or godly leaders. God places godly leaders in our lives or people like teachers and coaches and pastors that help us learn and avoid bad mistakes. So indirectly, that's how God helps us enter into the promises that he's made for us to have a, a hope and a future in our lives. In other words, love doesn't get a bad attitude about the future. Love always has a confident expectation about things that are to come from other people as well as directly from God. We are here on earth by God's will for such a time as this. You turn on the news and the radio and sometimes things seem so messed up, but it's no accident that you and I are here right now living our lives, expecting and anticipating the good that God will bring into our lives through his promises so that we can then in turn help other people, bless other people, and tell them the truth about the love of Jesus. And what's the number one reason that we should always hope? Because God always keeps his promises. Joshua 21:45 says, not one of the good promises that God has given to his people Israel has ever failed. And so you and I can put our confidence and our hope in that kind of God. Well, that's it for today. And until next week, Heavenly Father, thank you for hope. Lord, thank you that it's not just sort of, oh, we wish and maybe someday. No, we trust, we we hope, we 
confidently expect that you are and you will bring all the good promises that you have for us to pass in our lives, even though it may not necessarily be today or tomorrow. It could be a week, a month, or even years, but you will do what you said you would do because that's the kind of God you are in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Thank you.